Hello, and welcome to the CRM Zen Show, where we talk about all things Zoho. This is episode 151, Gateway Drugs to Zoho, recorded on Friday, July 18th, 2021 from Zanata Consulting. I'm Brett Martin. And I'm Tyler Colt, and let's get right on into the show. All righty, we've got a new webinar coming up. Our July webinar will be held on July 20th at 10 a.m. Pacific time, and we are going to go into Zoho subscriptions. We'll do a full product tutorial. We're changing the names, Tyler. We were calling these things uh, overview and best practices, but at the end of the day, they turned out to be tutorials. <laughs> and so kind of makes sense just to flip that up a little bit. And as always, if you want to know about all upcoming events in the world of Zoho, head over to CRM Zen and then click on events. And uh, we kind of keep track as to what's going on. So unfortunately, Zoho doesn't really let us know about their events until about a week before, but we try to get them there. So uh, check in. We do our them. best. We do. We do. They just kind of hear they're hidden all over the place. It makes Wayne's job fun. All right. Let's move right on into the news. This is super cool. At first, I was excited about it because I thought, wow, this could change the way we interact. But I think that would be a bit messy. But Zoho has added multi-organizational support with single sign-on. Um what this means now is that someone can actually send, you could send someone an invite to your CRM using an email that they're already using on their CRM, and they can now accept that and um, have multi-organizations. So it's a whole tutorial guide. If you read the uh, the link at the bottom, you can kind of click in, it tells you how to set it up, what you need to do. And if you kind of go down, you'll see you know, what it actually looks like. So if you're signing into the CRM, it says, hey, which one, which CRM account do you want to sign into? Um, the Slack integration, you've got all kinds of, all kinds of things. Um, fairly nice. So you got a single sign on, you sign in, and now you, uh, one username, one password, multiple organizations. Again, I thought, well, this really could work for us, you know, if we were given full admin, but I can't imagine signing in and choose from your CRM and having, you know, a couple, a couple hundred options to choose from. It might get a little messy. Yeah, it is. It's definitely a nice update though. I mean, this, uh, they did this for books a while back now where, you know, you can have your one login, but have these totally separate bucketed instances of books. Um, so really nice for to have that for the CRM as well. Yep. Um, the cool thing here that they're showing is, you know, as you're running integrations for desk, for click, any of those, you can pick which organization you want to integrate to. So you're not kind of stuck with having a primary and a secondary and everything's got to run through one of them. Um, you know, there are two fully separate instances of the CRM. Looks like here you can go up to 10. Yeah, uh, 10. So you can be a part of 10 different organizations under one user address. Um, I think that's going to cover most people's needs other than if you're really just running a whole bunch of companies where you'd have more than 10, but huge update though. I mean, that's something a lot of people have been asking for. You know, it's interesting though. You can be, you know, professional enterprise ultimate CRM plus Zoho one, but this is going to give you CRM access. So unless I'm reading this wrong, right? Mm -hmm. So if you were, you know, someone sent you an invite to the CRM from their Zoho one, but they wanted to grant you other access in the org, would you need a new email for that? Or oh, for the rest of the application? For the, the rest bundle? of for the rest of the applications in the bundle. Um, you know, when I first read this, I was thinking it would work for everything. But now, as I read a little deeper, I don't. Uh, I wonder what that's going to look like. But yeah, I would only count on this really mostly for CRM. Yep. I think for now. All right. Fantastic. Moving right along, um, we got our click updates for uh, April and May. We have covered most of these, I think. They are, you know, I don't know if we got the tele telephony integration with Zoho Click. Uh, this yeah, we've touched nice. on it a few times. I think we touched on a Ring Central plugin for it a little while back, but it looks like they're routing that through their own telephony now. Um, so nice to have, especially as Zoho Voice kind of gets standardized across all the various products. Um, nice value add there, just being able to click to call through uh, Zoho Click. Yeah, I think this is just any Zoho telephony app, right? Whatever you're using, go ahead and connect. Um, then they're talking about group calls on iOS, which I think we pretty much covered that. That That is uh, pretty nice as well. So click gets better and better. And uh, moving right along. 
Gantt chart enhancements. Now this one, I like a lot. So for the first time ever, you can filter your Gantt charts. You can have unscheduled tasks on a Gantt chart and identify those. Um, you know, this is probably my favorite view in any type of project software. And it's been a little messy inside of projects, but I think this is just a major change. Yeah, we've been using this a lot um, to build out templates for people. We've found that if you're kind of setting all of your start and due dates, building your dependencies, it's a lot easier to kind of get all the tasks down in the big list and then flip over to this Gantt chart and kind of map out how that project should run. Um, so the mo more improvements of this, the better. I mean, projects is kind of built for that cascade or waterfall project management. And so a Gantt chart is a really natural way to view that. So it's a good investment for them to keep building this out um, inside of projects. Yeah, and to be able to build out a custom view for your Gantt chart, mm -hmm. that's... Uh, Super, super nice. All right. And a lot of news this week from Zoho. So this is kind of cool. Zoho has added language translations inside of Zoho Forms. Um, and what this means is it's, it's not an automatic thing. So you have a form that's built out. You can go in, do a language translation, say translate it to German, then make whatever changes you want. And whatever languages you're going to send it out to, it'll do the changes for you. And um, then when you send it out to people, you'll need to add a little modifier at the end of it where you'll have a slash question mark ZF underscore Lang equals FR if you want to send it out in French. So you'll basically add each one of those as it's going out, put the language code in. And uh, then when those people get the form, it will be in that language. So it's kind of cool. It's one form, mm -hmm. all the data, all the statistics, everything from that. So um, I like this. I mean, I don't think we do a lot of multi-language. We did have one client I remember that was, you know, four or five languages mm -hmm. uh, in campaigns that we've been doing a lot of work with. But I think this will come in handy for some companies. Yeah, I could see a big use case for this if you're sending a form, like an outbound form. You know, if you've got a bunch of companies or contacts in your CRM and, you know, maybe you're tracking which language they prefer. Um, if you want to maybe send out an email blast with a form to ask for some additional information, right? That's where it becomes really easy to apply that, um, that little identifier for the language into the link in the email. Um, it would make it really natural. It'd be interesting to see how you would do this on an embed on a site. Um, you know, you might have to pre-fill that, right, based on the type of page that they're on or something. But this would be really easy to, to implement for any type of outbound send of a form. And uh, if you're in India, you can now get a free edition of Zoho Payroll. Uh, India is where Zoho really has the payroll service completely rolled out countrywide. Um, in the U.S., I still think we're Washington State, California, and Texas. Um, I haven't seen any other things on that, mm -hmm. but it's kind of nice. I mean, you do have to be a small business and they've kind of break that down, but um, you know, their payroll service is very, very dialed in over there. So I think this is a little uh, gateway drug to the rest of Zoho. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and get people yeah. in. It'll be great when this rolls out fully for the U.S. And, and hopefully if they have a tight integration of people, it would kind of round out that product as well. It's Probably the one kind of dangling thing in people that causes some headaches is just that, you know, it doesn't tie in any U.S. payroll system directly. So you right. have to do a lot of, you know, pulling out reports, reforwarding, formatting them for T-sheets or for sure payroll or whatever you're using. Yeah. Um, so if they can connect that dot, it'd be a, a real big value add. Yeah, it'll be. It's nice. I, mean, I never thought I'd call Zoho Payroll a gateway drug, but um, it's, you know, it's a nice, it's a nice enhancement. And by the way, sure payroll, um, we did switch over been using it for several months now. That's the best Zoho payroll integration there is out there. I mean, it's it's just seamless. So if you're in the US, um, check it out. The pricing's good. Everything's good on it. Uh, basically, you do the payroll there and it automatically connects into books, does your journal entry, does everything for you. So it's just, it's super slick. Well worth, uh, well worth taking a look at. All righty, moving on with Zoho News. We've got some creator updates for June 2021. Uh, what do you think of these? Yes, yeah, so to kind of summarize a little here, a little bit more on top of the uh, feature that they rolled out last month with Blueprints, right? So kind of building out a little bit more process management that you can do there. Um, updating the UI, 
when you're looking at reports inside of embedded pages, you know, you know, you can kind of set like a standard view of what those should look like. Um, and then a couple just updates and enhancements to summarize. So a little bit easier to import data into a live application. That's always, it's felt a little bit behind the times, the way that you actually run those imports. So I think they're working on updating that. Uh, additional settings around printing and exporting. You're able to update your connections a little easier as you're going ahead and creating those. Um, so just some minor updates across the board. I think the big one here in Creator for the next little while is going to be those blueprints as they continue to build those out. Yeah, I'd be curious to get Josh's take on this um, since he lives in Creator pretty much a good chunk of his life. Uh, also, we got the Zoho People newsletter. Always love the Zoho People newsletter. And uh, if this one is, if you're a Zoho People person, they do a ex- really, really, really nice job of this. And I found another webinar in here we're going to add to our, uh, this is kind of how Zoho works. Just a webinar just kind of appears <laughs> in the middle of a newsletter. So it'll be the only place you can find it. So, um, but if you're using Zoho people and you haven't subscribed to the newsletter, I think we say it every month, Tyler, great newsletter, go ahead and check it out. And talking about free stuff, this is really interesting to me. Zoho books is unveiling a free plan for business um, worldwide. And you basically, you know, your business has to be within a certain, uh, I, I, you know, economic barriers, a certain amount of revenue. If you make more than a certain amount of revenue, (coughs) then they're going to charge you. Um, I don't know how they're going to test this because the only way to know is if your revenue hit a certain point would be to go against Zoho's privacy laws and look at what your overall revenue is. Mm -hmm. Um, So I guess this is an honor system and also an honor system for maybe an individual that would like a world-class bookkeeping system and want to keep track of their personal books. Um, but they have, uh, they have rolled it out. And it looks like here, I saw they're up to a thousand invoices per year. Yep. I think that's and, maybe how they'll do it is they're going to limit on how many you can create right within that. Yeah. They're going to, they're neutering it a little bit. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, it is based upon your revenue, but it's, um, you know, as long as a business's growth revenue is within the free plan threshold limit in the financial year. And I can't find that anywhere. Uh, I look for it, but anyway, I think, you know, this actually could be yet another great gateway drug for uh, mm-hmm. Zoho's just rolling out the gateways, man. I'm telling you what, <laughs> what's next. <laughs> hey, and that takes us again to some more Zoho news. Uh, so Zoho Workly has added a pre-check in for Temps. Uh, when I first looked at this, I thought, "What?" But uh, really, what it is is if you, you know, they're using an example of, uh, I think, a nursing staff or something where you, it's absolutely you have to have know that somebody's going to be there. This lets somebody say, "I'm on my way," mm-hmm. or I'm, "I'm late," "I'm going to run late," you know, or "I'm not on my way." So you can maybe adjust the schedule to have someone cover for them. So nice, nice addition to work with me. Yeah, and that's, I mean, I could see a big use case for that. If you think about, you know, let's say like contract work, you're doing construction, you're doing implementation of hardware on site, right? You might have 10 different contractors who are driving anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour, right? To get to that location. So being able to quickly say, hey, I'm on my way, it's going to take me an hour, but just so you know, right? You have notice I am coming in for this. Um, I could see a pretty big use case for that as kind of a simple little thing just to make sure that you know, hey, this person lives about an hour away. They've not checked in. Maybe I need to call someone and see if we can get a fill. Um, I can see it. Definitely a nice feature to have. Like a simple one that seems obvious, but uh, a lot of use case for it. Yeah. Uh, You could do this. I mean, I guess I was going to say it'd be nice to see this in click, but I guess you could just send a message to everybody saying I'm running late or whatever. But, Mm -hmm. you know, they have all those nice check-in features on click and all that kind of stuff Uh, might be worth adding into there as well. But uh, nice feature. I mean, they keep uh, keep improving uh, workerly. We still have yet to have a single client. I think we've done a workerly implementation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. And then uh, Zoho Workplace ran through all the updates they did in May. I went through these. We did cover them all. Um, so a lot going on here. It's funny though. They talk about the, you know, they now have, uh, sped up the document mergers, which is, uh, is nice. And the document creation tool, uh, we should mention, I don't know, is this an, is that our implementation of the week? What I'm about to talk about? Well, I think it should <laughs> probably be the one for next week. 
Yeah. Um, but we did some, we basically were on form stack and we're able to do a complete migration uh, better at the end of the day, because we did everything internally in Zoho, uh, doing dynamic content and all sorts of things for proposals. And um, I, we're, I'm really excited about these new features inside of the, of the entire workplace suite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're finding more and more, I mean, with Writer, with WorkDrive, and being able to query and create all those documents and organize them with Deluge, it's just really powerful where, you know, now, what you used to have to use a third party tool for, you just make it in deluge and you've got that magic button that creates a proposal that you need. It's a huge value that they're building and being able to tie that to your CRM, to books, to projects, you know, all with one language just is so valuable. Yeah. All right, Tyler. And that brings us to the actual implementation of the week. What do we got? Yes. Yeah, so this is one that we built out um, around Zoho projects and Zoho CRM. Um, so a really common use case that we find with Zoho users is, you know, CRM is kind of home base. You're managing your accounts, your contacts there. You're working your deals to start up new engagements and sales. And then once you actually close that sale, it's time to make the project and go ahead and fulfill it. And whenever we're working with people that are using projects, we always advise to use templates whenever possible. Even if your projects have some variability, if that template can get 90% of the tasks that you need, just going to save you a ton of time and, and help you standardize some of your implementation. Um, but when you're using the default integration, you know, you've got to actually go in to the deal or to the account. You've got to make the project. You've got to pick the template. You've got to set the start date, right? And kind of do these manual steps to get that created. Um, and it's not the end of the world. It's a quick little form that you kind of go through. But Oftentimes, you know, you kind of just based on that deal information, you already know what that project should look like. And so using Deluge, what we're able to do is, you know, using a button in the deal, using an update of a stage, we can go ahead and query the account, query the deal, figure out what type of project this needs to be based on that information, and then just create it using the correct template all automatically. Doing it this way, we can also connect it back to the account and deal. So at the end of the day, it looks exactly the same as if you had created it manually. You're just able to kind of skip past that point in the process. Um, a big little added value here is, you know, you might win that deal and you think, okay, I'll go ahead and create the project later. Now it ends up being tomorrow and now we're making the project and we're kind of a day behind where we could have been if everything was created right away and that project got started. Um, so it's just kind of one that we've implemented a variety of different ways. Um, one last little note on this is that you can also do it for child records of a deal. So maybe you're doing a deal and you've got three different you know, implementations linked to that deal that you're gonna go ahead and do. Um, you can also do this where you know, that deal hits a certain stage, you read that list and then create a project for each of those records. Um, so you're not limited just to have one project per deal, you know, based on the deluge logic, you can create all of them that you might need. Super nice. I mean, you know, sometimes I think we talk about automation and it's not worth it, you know, it's, it's just, but uh, there are so many of these things where it's just so worth it. It saves so much time mm -hmm. as you just kind of automate the step. And then, you, you know, and, you know, sometimes you make an error, right? You're, you're going to go ahead and create right. that project. You, you grab the template and you just pick the wrong one on accident, right? It happens all the time to me, to you, to anybody, right? And so if the code knows what it needs to do, it's, it's less likely to accidentally click the wrong template. All right, let's talk about our read of the week. Um, Dennis Palm Bryant over at CRM Buyer. Uh, I like this. This was, you know, he's basically talking about working from wherever and there are just more and more studies. And I, it's interesting that the, the uptake of this article is that people who can work from home, who really don't have any reason to go into the office, who were working in an office and then have been working for home are now saying, forget it. <laughs> you know what? Mm -hmm. if, if you really want me to come back, it's totally unnecessary. And since the job market is crazy right now, people are just quitting without other jobs and just, you know, figuring they can find something. Um, I do think there's going to be a dynamic shift here. I don't know how drastically the commercial real estate market's going to be affected or companies mm -hmm. going to be affected. There's a whole blow up with Apple last week around this where their employees said, you know, we're not going to take it anymore. We don't, we don't want to work from home. But uh, 
I, and I think Zoho is perfectly suited for the entire road warrior work from home environment, you know, for those mm -hmm. people who really can do it. I don't know. Do you, your take on this? Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's going to become more and more standard. I mean, you see it in, you know, articles that get published anywhere. One that came out maybe a month or so ago was Google did an internal survey and it was, you know, 70 plus percent of people don't ever want to go to the office and the majority of the rest would like a part-time office, right? So they can go in maybe one, two days a week. Um, you know, and of course, there are going to be jobs where you have to be on site, right? If you're managing a big data center, you've got to be there, right? It's a local system. If you're working and actually implementing things, hardware, you know, there's going to be a need for people to go to locations to do work. But for many, many jobs, it might just not be as necessary. And there's a lot of ancillary benefits too. I think if large employers kind of take a look at what, what you can achieve by working remote, they might see opportunity there, right? You, need, you can pay less, you can have a smaller office building, right? You, you don't have to pay for, you know, AC and utilities in those buildings, right? You're not sponsoring lunches in the office, right? There's all these expenses that, you know, might not be top of mind, but that you're not really going to need to pay for um, as more and more people are working remote. Yeah. And I mean, the thing that I've always preached since I pretty much you know, worked remote most of my life is um, if you're going to do it. And I think maybe what a lot of people are struggling with is you, you really have to be disciplined. You mm -hmm. have to set work hours. I mean, you, that whole, you know, work life balance can just get totally flipped on its head when you're working mm -hmm. from home. Cause you're just totally plugged in all the time. And it's uh, you know, it's crazy. So, you know, I think if you put the tools in place and you monitor yourself uh, it's going to be, yeah, going to be pretty, pretty interesting to see where this goes over the next few years. Um, mm -hmm. I think the, I think the shift is happening, and I think it's you know for those things where you can work from home, I think it's only going to get, only yeah. going to get better. And Jessica, one of our you know, live listeners here, kind of chimed in as well that she agrees part time in the office is ideal. You know, you kind of by not being there at all, you might miss some of that water cooler collaboration, right? But then the flip side is is that you know for some people working from home, you're able to focus more. Right, you're not having coworkers swinging by your desk to say hi, right? And there's pros and cons to that, right? The social element can be valuable as well, and and you know we try to encourage that as Zanata being fully remote. I mean, we've got click channels that are dedicated to just sharing songs that you like, and you know we have informal touch bases and meetings, but it's kind of on a balance, right? There's pros and cons, but I think the preference is is shifting pretty rapidly, especially yeah. if you've got a commute. <laughs> That's a whole different element if you've got a commute. Yeah. But, you know, I think we're, we're totally fortunate um, at Zanata anyway, because there's nothing we can't do that's not remote. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, I tell you, it is nice though. Occasionally, you know, get a client in Southern California and I'll just go in and see them. And, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's nice to see their businesses and what they're doing and meet them face to face. It's a, it is a whole different thing. So yes, we did that when, uh, when I was a client back before I joined Zanata, um, you drove up to San Luis Obispo where I was at and we, uh, got together and got some dinner. Yeah, well, I nice. love, I love when I got clients in great location like San Luis Obispo, because <laughs> I could just go up there. Speaking of which, Jessica, I think you are, uh, I know that Jessica works with Catalyst Connect. I'm actually talk about bad timing, Tyler. I booked these tickets like two months ago to go to Tucson this weekend where it is now 100 and you know, what is it? It's a thousand <laughs> it's an all time high, right? <laughs> all time record. high. I did it just cause I'm getting my, uh, the original reason is to get my century pass. Cause I, we talk about, I go down to Mexico all the time and this takes your, you know, hour and a half to four hour wait down to 10 minutes, just going through. And, um, it's taken over two years. And if I had tried to go to the border patrol, you have to do a face-to-face -face meeting with them. Mm -hmm. And if I had to do it with the border patrol here in California, I couldn't get it done until like March of next year. Um, but the Tucson office could get me at any time. So while I'm out there, um, I'm going to basically go and uh, uh, meet with John Mark over at Catalyst. Going to have dinner with him and his wife tonight, as a matter of fact. So it should be I think we'll just sit in his pool and eat. I don't know. It's going <laughs> to be hot. And I'm sorry, Jessica. Jessica is a systems manager for a software company. I, I got it. Beautiful. Well, I will tell him hi for you. I know you didn't work for him. I thought you worked with those guys over there, Jessica. Anyway. All right. Uh, and uh, oh, they did. Great. I will tell him hello then. All right. So moving on, let's see what we got going over at Zanata.com. Um, we have got a... 
blog on what is applicant tracking software and how Zoho Workerly can help. So even though we haven't done Workerly, well, that doesn't stop us from writing a long form article on how to use Workerly and get it going anyway. So uh, great job from the team there. And then tying in Zoho Inventory, five key features. And we uh, did a full product tutorial. We did our webinar uh, Tuesday of this week on Zoho inventory. So you can catch that. And this is basically a, uh, follow-up kind of talking about some other key features that you want to, uh, you'll want to do with Zoho inventory. And also on, we've got our, uh, full product tutorial, as we have said over on, uh, the YouTube channel. Um, I'll tell you what, 438 views in two days, this might be a winner. Um, <laughs> so I think a lot of people wanted to get a Zoho inventory product tutorial. So anyway, that's uh, a lot of people watching that. So thanks so much for your support there. And then Wayne informs me that this may be in fact, the very, very last, uh, guide that he's been able to call, uh, from, uh, from searching the internet. Uh, and this is a nonprofit's guide to a Zoho creator. Um, and so worth taking a look at this well if you're a nonprofit using Zoho Creator and the benefits of that. All right, and that brings us to our application of the week. So I love this application. This is one of the few apps in the uh, Zoho App Store that has got just amazing reviews. It's got 37 reviews and it's it's not quite five stars, but it's like 4.8 nine mm -hmm. stars, uh, credit data, direct extension for Zoho CRM. So what this does now, you have to go ahead and get connected with TransUnion and Equifax, and you, you've got to be connected with one of those services. You have to be an approved vendor. There's a process you have to go through in order to pull this information when working with the credit reporting agencies. Um, but if you are working with them, this is a beautiful API that can pull that credit data directly into the CRM for you. So you can tell them, hey, I want Experian TransUnion Equifax. It's going to go out, grab the information, uh, and pull it from this credit reporting services and drop it directly into the Zoho CRM for you. Um, so, and we do work with a lot of companies that are doing lending and leasing and those kind of things where they're constantly checking this. Um, it's a uh, uh, pretty nice service. These guys are, you know, real deal worth taking a look at. Um, and the reviews on this, like I say, uh, they're so good and they're so recent, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so there's, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of people and, you know, oftentimes when we look at Z extensions that are written for Zoho, I just don't see this kind of love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so this evidently works really well. Yeah. And people will definitely let you know, in the, uh, in the Zoho marketplace, if they do not like a plugin, they will let you know all about it. One thing I note here as well is a lot of their comments are mentioning that the uh, the team behind it is also willing to help out, right? If yep. you're having any issues implementing it and getting it set up, seems like their responsiveness is really good. Yeah. So if you are in that lending finance space, or really anywhere where you might want to do a credit check, I mean, even if you're just selling product and you want to consider offering payment terms or anything in that vein, um, you might still want to run a quick credit check and this would be a nice tool to do that for you. Yeah. So it looks like they got this one star review because do not know how this works. So if I discount that ridiculous review, <laughs> then they're going to be a total five stars across the board <laughs> instead of 4.9. Um, I think they need to petition Zoho to remove that review. Anyway, uh, great job guys. And I always, uh, love pointing, uh, out when, you know, you've got a great extension that provides a really niche service and it seems to do it exceptionally well. Mm -hmm. All right. And that brings us to our tip of the week. Tyler, you're, uh, you're, you did an entire group of uh, tips on Zoho projects that are going to be rolling out. Yes. Yeah, so this is our first video on Zoho projects. Uh, kind of in our beginner series, we just go through the essentials, right? So nothing crazy here. If you're a power user of projects, you probably know this stuff. Uh, but what we walk through is kind of the initial profile, setting up your personal settings, doing the portal configuration, which actually has more to it than you would think. Um, that's where a lot of your settings around how you track time, how you want to move around with dependencies, uh, a lot of default settings there to have pretty big impacts on how projects actually works. Then we do a quick touch on user management as well as the profiles and roles over in projects. 
So I have a couple of these rolling out over the next few weeks to get you uh, up and running with that tool. All right, and that brings us to our Q and A. We don't really have a Q and A, but uh, man, Jessica, you helping us out here today. So Jessica says she's got an implementation for us. Um, have we done this before? I'm kind of thinking maybe we have. Mass updating some Zoho desk ticket owners based on having to do it one at a time. So I'm thinking you're mentioning that it's because when people leave a company and you need to move those tickets over. So it seems like maybe not updating the owner, but updating the contact related. You know, where there's a will, there's a way. What you would likely need to do is if you had in the CRM, assuming you're kind of using the integration, if you had a lookup field in the CRM for primary contact, you could very likely run a function that would go over to desk and run that update for you when you update that field in the CRM. Um, you could likely jerry rig a similar thing within desk um, if you are using that as a standalone, but First thing that comes to mind here is CRM being home base and kind of running the update from CRM into desk, uh, just so you don't lose that ticket history as people might leave the leave your client companies. And we also had kind of a not a Q and A, but a suggestion from Troy um, in the questions. You know, should, could we do a session on how Zenata uses Zoho? Um, that's actually a really good idea. We might want to make some videos around that because we do. We use it for everything, literally every single thing in our company, except payroll, I guess, technically we push the data over to sure payroll, but it still lives inside of Zoho. Yeah. Um, but everything from all of our forms on the website, the whole CRM, document management, invoicing and accounting, uh, time billings. We built a client portal with creator um, projects for all of our task management. And we, we eat the dog food as the saying goes with really every single Zoho app. Um, so yeah, that's a that's a pretty cool idea there. We might want to follow up on that. Thanks, Troy. Yeah, I like that a lot too. And for I think for a so period of time, Tyler, you and I were so busy. You, me, and Josh were so busy um, in the early days that we were like the uh, you know the cobbler whose children have no shoes. You know, <laughs> it was a, our, our CRM and our whole Zoho was lacking. Um, but as we've grown and grown and grown, it's gotten really. It's also been a great way for us to kind of train new devs, right? Mm -hmm. um, say, hey, here's a crazy thing we want you to do in the CRM that we've been talking about for about six months, but we've never had time for. So go take mm -hmm. a swag at it, right? And it lets us gauge them and they get to learn a lot a lot just doing that. So all in all, then uh, it's good. So we, we could do that. I'd have to figure, I guess we could do it with some dummy records, right? Yeah, we do, it would almost need to be thing. a series. <laughs> yeah, it would. <laughs> We use many of the Zoho apps, other than just a, a select few. I guess we still use Gmail and Google Calendar. We use Calendly and Zoom and set up bookings and Zoho meetings just for a couple little things that we're not quite up to snuff with those apps in Zoho Suite. Uh, yeah. But really, everything else is all Zoho all the time. Yeah, yeah it'd be good. All righty. I don't know if we'd go app by app because the integrations between the apps are a lot too, right? So it wouldn't be like, be hey, let's by process. Yeah, it would be. It could be like, here's how we use click because it's tied into, a, you know, 10 different things. So, mm -hmm. all righty. And with that, we're going to wrap up the show. I want to thank everybody for listening. If you have any questions or comments, you can hit us up over at info at Zenata.com or info at CRMZen.com. And on the website, you'll find complete episodes of the podcast, as well as show notes with links to all the stories we discussed today. As always, you can follow us on your favorite social media platform and subscribe to us on your favorite podcast app, as well as on YouTube. We'll see you next Monday.